Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Isaac, Isaac Say Podcast. Podcast. Yeah, Tima. Hello. How are you Sam. doing? I'm doing good. I really, I can't complain. Yeah. One bit. That's good. So, basically, introduce yourself. Kind of tell us about what you do in the church. Um, how you been doing lately? What's it been like with life? So, hello, everyone. I like to introduce myself. I think I was on, I don't know what episode. It was the worship episode, I believe. Yeah, the like, worship episode. So it's probably um, the fourth one or something like that. Yeah. Um, my name is Tim. Once again, I play the drums um, for the different worship teams on our church, and I just help around. Maybe share words a couple times when Dennis yeah. lets me. But yeah, mainly just helping out around and just doing whatever I can. Do I just talk about church stuff? That's it. Yeah, basically. Okay, yeah, nothing else outside of my life is that important. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I I mean, I'm, I'm happy to get you on because, um, first of all, I mean, I'm, it was cool having you on the podcast before, but also I, I'm like, you're like a good friend of mine, so I like, I'm, I'm happy to finally get like some kind of good conversation down and talk about something important in uh, the Bible sphere. And um, uh, I kind of brought you on because I wanted to talk about kind of some, like, some things that have been happening recently, and I kind of wanted to talk about Christians not bending to culture. Um, I think it's a really important topic, and I think th- this thing is super important for, for people like you and my age to talk about, especially since, like, we're going to be going into leadership soon, into, you know, positions where, you know, there's going to be points where culture is going to be going against us, and, and kind of the, the word of Christianity that's been spoken, and and we're going to have to be you know, like a, like a light almost in, in this kind of season. So, yeah. So I'm excited, man. Um, I kind of want to start this off, this whole discussion off by um, stating this verse. And it's uh, it says, Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that uh, by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. And this is Romans 12 to ESV. And I don't know. I kind of wanted to get your thoughts on this whole cultural culture battle and kind of what's going on. Like, what do you, what do you see uh, that's happening in the world today? Um, well, I mean, if you look around you, if you really go anywhere, you can see culture and how it is. Um, if you look at Washington State, you can see a big culture change Um if you go to Seattle to a town called Arlington where I live, it's way up north and um, it's like hillbilly nation compared to we have Seattle where it's a bunch of hipsters. You can see the culture change. Um, but the one thing about culture is that people, they kind of try fitting in with their surroundings. They try, they start dressing differently. They um, start talking a different way, listen to certain music. And culture is just kind of like the way of living that people have. And as far as this goes as Christians, um, we can even see it as a lot of, as as us as Christians, we can see us accepting cultures Mm -hmm. and other things like that. We have even the different denominations that accept different cultures. Um, We have like our church, for example. um, We... I guess you can say we like you can see the way we dress. We're not wearing suits right now. We're not really yeah, yeah. super formal. Uh, we're a little, a little more relaxed and chilled back. We um, we're more I guess you can say modern. There's a there's a wider spectrum. There's people who are a lot more modern than us. People who allow a lot more clothing than that we do. And there's people that are more conservative um, and that wear more conservative clothing. But it comes to I guess you can say their conviction on what you to wear and what not to wear. But then what I think is important, what that verse was talking about, mm-hmm. is a line that is drawn for a certain sin that there is. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we're going to talk about the LGBTQ, so that's different. That's yeah, no, yeah, yeah, even, like all of that, honestly. Yeah. I think, I'm in kind of like touching up on what you're saying, there's like, there's different kinds of culture that we can 
you know, categorize almost. Yeah. Like there's almost like um, secondary culture mm-hmm. that's like clothing and especially in the church, like there, we yeah. can see like there's so many different kinds of, you know, people and how they dress and stuff. But then there's like this almost like this ethical side of culture that like us as Christians, like we have to, you know, acknowledge a lot of the time. And especially, like, and, and I see, like, this thing play out in, in school a lot, too, like, in, in, is for, like, people that are our age or even or younger, like, in college, in high school, where there's a certain, like, culture, per se, that is, like, in the ethical spectrum. And, you know, everyone's just, like, conforming to it, conforming to mm-hmm. it, but then there's Christians that are being left out in that, so... Um, but yeah, even like with LGBTQ, um, that's like a type of thing that is being pushed upon in, in this culture, re- like as a recently. And on Christians, it's being pushed on Christians because they're not seen as being accepting of that kind of culture. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there's that, there's transgenderism. And you know what even like kind of sparked up this whole thing? Like what I kind of wanted to talk about was even like... Um, there's like some kind of Roe v. Wade. The decision was being leaked, almost like it basically being leaked. And what I was saying was that it was being overturned. And this is just like, like part of this whole cultural culture battle that we're we're having. Basically, um, some people are conforming to this, you know, being accepting. Like I even see seen like some pastors tweet like that are actually okay with this, which is crazy to me. That you know, abortion, killing of a child is okay. And, the, and you know, all this stuff is just, it's it's like, it's crazy to see all this play out. But uh, I kind of want to ask, like, in the midst of this, um, or actually, you know, let's even go into something else. Do you, what are some examples in the Bible that where we see people going against culture, like certain persons in the Bible that are going against culture? Like, what... What are some examples of that? I mean, if you really look at any big leaders, I mean, you can even look at Jesus, but um, you can look at the prophet of, um, of pro- the prophet Elijah. Um, during this time, there was, a, I guess you can call her the Princess Jezebel, right? Yeah. She'd be considered a princess. I don't know what she would yeah. Be yeah. The queen. Yeah, and she really set the culture in Israel because she brought in a, because um, she was married off from a a different she wasn't married she wasn't an israelite she wasn't from israel she was married from a different nation and she brought in foreign religions and idols um the religion of baal and um this changed the culture in israel Mm -hmm. israel started looking to um the god of baal so that's how you say it right yeah okay good so some people say Baal. some people say Baal. whatever you know but um, they started bringing this culture, and Israel started worshiping um, Baal. And Elijah was actually, he was set out during this time. And you can see really kind of like how he was a sore thumb to the culture of that time. Mm-hmm. He really stood out. He he rebuked the king. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I mean, he was just enemies with all the, he was enemies with Jezebel. And there was even one time where there was like 40, or I don't remember, probably a lot more than 40 prophets, they they came to that sacrifice, right? And they asked for their God to rain down fire yeah. to burn up um, yeah. the sacrifice. And you can just see that the the way that he was against the culture, because he was literally, he was rebuking the authority that was setting the standard in that nation. Uh, he rebuked the king for um, for for him. He was, he was going to go out and he, he did kill. Well, he went out, yeah, and he took a garden from someone, mm-hmm. and he stole it from that person. But it was just, yeah, you you can see kind of like that, or even Jesus, he was different in the way that he talked. He, um, it says in the Bible that he he talked with authority that, that people haven't seen before. He talked to a lot of poor people. He talked to sinners. Mm-hmm. It wasn't part of culture to talk to to sinners. You had to be around good people. Mm-hmm. So you can see, I guess, a lot of stories in the Bible where, um, where I guess you can say the heroes of the Bible, they didn't conform to culture. Yeah. They were set on what God had in front of them, and that that's what made them go against the culture. Yeah, definitely. Like, I, I, I definitely see that, too, especially with, 
you know, taking an example from Elijah, all all the prophets <coughs> of God were being killed off. And, you know, regardless of this fear, regardless of everything that's going on in the, in the midst of that, that he's just like standing firm in, in all this. And he's saying, you know, I'm not going to bow to this, this like false doctrine. I'm just going to stay strong. And I think a lot of us, you know, in our, in our walks, like it's hard for us to, to stay firm because it's, it's scary sometimes to uh, have a different opinion than everyone else around you. Um, and then for, especially for Christ, uh, a lot of things that he's doing is that he's elevating the law, right? So the at the at the time of that culture of the Jewish culture, they had the law, and Christ comes in and he's saying, you know what, like divorce, I don't like unless it's like sexual immorality, um, or I think there's something else I can't remember, but there's sexual immorality, like you you can't divorce, like you, you know, you guys are tethered basically. And then there's all these other things where he's calling out sin. He's calling out sinners. He's being very truthful. And, you know, that's all important. And even like, even this one story uh, in the book of Daniel, we have Daniel who is uh, brought into this like foreign land. He's brought into Babylon. And we have uh, King Nebuchadnezzar and he's saying, yo, everybody's got to worship me, you know. Um, everyone has to bow to my statue. But here uh, we have Daniel's friends coming up and being like, we're not going to bow to your statue. Uh, I forgot their names. Meshach, Abednego, and then there's one other. I don't remember off the top of my head, but they're basically they're saying, I'm not going to bow to the, this idol. And then Daniel, when, you know, later on in the story uh, with Daniel, uh, there's a law that is decreed or there's no prayer. But even because, like, despite that, Daniel is still praying. So we see all these biblical hero- heroes staying firm to truth, you know, not giving in and anything like that. So I think that's important to remember. And, I'm, yeah, that's that's good that you brought that up. And uh, <clears throat> also, I kind of wanted to like, kind of get into this, but um, do you think um, – Christians are afraid to speak the truth because it might be offensive to some people? Um, well, the quick answer is definitely yes. <laughs> it's um, a pretty pretty obvious Yeah, it's a pretty answer. obvious. Um, if you look around you in know, a lot of churches, um, we, o- we always know somebody, and I even went through this in myself, where in church I'm one way, but then when I'm out and about, I'm a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, at church you may seem like you're a good person, but as soon as you um, you go to work, you go to school, any kind of place where you're influenced by the world. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not holding on to God's truth and you're not relying on God for his strength, yep. you're going to conform in one way or another. Um, there's there's always one kind of saying that a lot of, um, that I've heard a lot of preachers say was that it's whether you're getting closer to God or further from God. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's a general rule in, rule in life. Even if, like, you're on a diet, it's whether you're getting fatter or you're getting skinnier. And you can apply this to this area of how much you're accepting from mm-hmm. the outside world. It's whether you're blocking out more and you're becoming more like Christ or you're accepting more of the world and you're becoming more like the world. Yeah. Um, and this is what a lot of Christians, they have to battle out. And it's something that, th- it's something that they have to die to themselves in order to not care about what others think. Mm-hmm. about what you wear, about how you talk, about what you listen to. Yeah. Or even just the fact about talking to Jesus. It's something that you have to die on the inside. You have to die to yourself. Um, and, yeah, it's just a lot of Christians, I guess you can say. And I can I can look around myself and I can even see people really struggling with, with um, including myself, struggling with the fact that like, I have to die to myself in order to talk about Christ. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. 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 And kind of, yeah, I, I'd say the same thing for me, like sort of sometimes I see myself like trying to speak to culture in, in certain instances. And it's really hard, honestly, to like be open to certain evangelism in, in certain times and to kind of speak truth uh, when you see that there's something that, that isn't quite right, especially when you're looking at the Bible, setting that as your standard and being like, OK, this is this is clear truth. This is what what is right, and then we see this happening in, in the side, and, you know, for some people, like, for me, like, I, 
I, I sometimes like to be like a, I like to make people happy, right? I like to, th- I like people to think good of me in, in, in a lot of instances, and I want people to see that I'm a, I'm a cool guy, blah, blah, blah. But as soon as we bring up, uh, you know, something about the Bible or that, you know, we don't necessarily believe in like um, LGBTQ or we think that abortion is, is uh, you know, that we think abortion is wrong and on all these things and that, that Christ is the only way. You know, and, and you know, one thing that I've seen recently is like, some people will be like, oh, there's so many ways to, to, to heaven. Like, there's so many ways to God. Like, that's one instance where, where I've seen people be like, yo, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm a good person. I think I'm going to make it to heaven. And I think we, I think you have seen them and I've seen them. But there's, like, um, videos of Ray Comfort coming up and interviewing people. And then a lot of people are like, yeah, um, I think I'm a pretty good person. I think I, I can make it to heaven. But in reality, like, I think... Um, it's important to know that the Christianity, like, is the is, we have to realize that the only way to to heaven is through Christ, through God, and I think that's really important to to remember. Like, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but basically, yeah, that's just kind of what my th- thinking was is on this question. But I don't know if you had any thoughts on that in particular. Um, I don't, I don't have much to add. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, I guess. already took everything. Yeah. Anyways, so I also wanted to touch up on this in particular, but um, are Christians called to be loving or correcting? And I think this is kind of a trick question, the way it's stated, but. I think it's definitely a trick question. Um, But the answer to this question, um, or the way that I think of it, it's definitely, um, it's shown if you look at your parents, um, to those who, who've had loving parents, mm. and to those parents who are loving and they were disciplining them, we know that through love comes correction. Mm-hmm. When you truly love someone you and they're doing something wrong, mm-hmm. you're going to correct their path. And you're going to point it out to them because you love that person. You don't want what's, what's bound to happen to happen to them if they continue in this behavior or in this light. Mm. Um, and a lot of times, I guess you can say we might have the question, even when we're, we're correcting the world mm-hmm. in some way, or you can say that maybe some group of people, they're, they're going to a bad way, or even people might, they're going to be mad at the LGBTQ community because they're living that life. Mm-hmm. And they might be saying, like, oh, you can't judge us, and that doesn't really apply to us. But we have to realize that in the Bible, it literally says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Mm-hmm. It says that literally the, the Bible, it's, it's what's right. Mm-hmm. And the Bible teaches us that, hey, lust is bad. Hey, practicing homosexuality, it's bad. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people, it's really hard to swallow, but it's the truth that people need to accept. And when we share that truth with people, obviously in a loving way, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be mad at people, yeah. but we should come with love. Mm-hmm. And that just shows that when we correct someone, like we can, we can show our love even by correcting people. Mm. But correcting, obviously, a lot of people, they will take it out of context. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, like, I, uh, like we have to correct everything. Like I remember yeah. when, I, when I first got saved, and anything bad happening around me, I, I'm pretty sure I still have this issue, issue where I, I might do too much correcting and things that I, I might see around me. Mm-hmm. But Dennis actually talked to us, our youth pastor, and um, he was talking about me encouraging others. And that's also a great way you can love someone. Yeah. But I think that correcting, it falls under the umbrella of love. Mm-hmm. So loving and correcting is not really a two-sided thing they're on the same side yeah and if they're used correctly they're they're like a good married couple yeah so yeah no literally yeah i mean and i know that kind of touching touching up on what you're saying sorry excuse me Oof. but kind of touching up on what you're saying um i noticed that christians who uh show themselves in a positive light towards people who are of the world you know who don't hold biblical values, who aren't in the church, 
actually are really effective when they're shown in a positive light and they're they're showing love you know i think like some people they might get correction mixed up and they might think okay if i'm correcting this person then i gotta tell them that they're wrong um that what they're doing is wrong and if they if they you know don't correct this then you know god hates them and i hate them and you know the, the christians like that that's like the super like crazy view that some people hold not all christians you know might think that but they're thinking like they're thinking of correction in like a super strict version of it but i think the the kind of correction that we're called to is the loving kind and love doesn't mean that you're just going to overlook um you know obvious sin you know love just means that you're you care about the person and what that means is when you care about the person is that you're able to call certain things out you know that you're able to say i don't think this is right i don't think um that <laughs> like i don't know like there are multiple genders or something or um or you know like some cultural issues like that or that uh, you know some sort of sexual sins are okay i don't think they're that they're okay i think that you know, there, there's a there's a line that you're trying to draw, but sometimes when you're talking to a person and then you're <clears throat> able to converse with them like normally, like normal people, you know, it actually ends up being really effective, and they're able to look at your character and able to test it and be like, yeah, you know, because yeah, definitely your actions should always speak louder than your words. Yeah, the way that you act around people or even around people at work, mm-hmm. they see the way you act. They they see if you show up on time. They see if you if you're respectful to whatever happened, whatever's happened, they see if you're not complaining, they see if you work hard. I think I already said that. Maybe I didn't. Um, but it's really important that before you go and correct someone mm-hmm. that you live that life. Yeah. And you live it to the max of like kind of, you're just kind of like you're telling everyone about Jesus without telling them. And, and then that, I've had that. And there are times, yes, when you only have a limited time with someone, you share Jesus and what, and, and there's, but there's cases where, you know, I'm working with someone for months on end and I'm with the same person every single day mm-hmm. and where I can really show Christ through me. Yeah. And that's obviously the grace of Christ that I can act in these ways and through his strength that we can act in these ways. So if we really want to be standing out in culture mm-hmm. and we really want to be able to love people and correct them in the right way, we have to be set in Jesus. We have to be set in the, we have to hope in him. Yeah, you can't just be like walking into the room, be like, yo, like, you know, cussing, you know, being like, hey, what's up? And then going, living a debaucherous lifestyle yeah, and then expect to have any like impact in that, in that area for sure. It has to overflow from what God has given us. Yeah, and it overflows and it goes into other people's, I guess you can say vessels or, or cups. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I want to ask this one interesting question, but where do you think you had any instances where you had a stamp for him and a conviction um, when culture came and started colliding with, like, any of your beliefs? Because I've definitely had that in high school for sure. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you have um, – I'm trying to think of specific times at work. But there's been times at work where someone's talking about something mm-hmm. and you can't talk about it. Or everyone around you, they're cussing, they're swearing, mm-hmm. and you're not going to talk about that. Um in school, for me, um, I couldn't hang out with my friends anymore because there's no way. I, I think I, I remember I sat with the ta- my t- old table group, mm-hmm. and I kept being just talking about Christ. But you have to realize that in a group setting, when they're together, they're not going to accept anything that you're going to say. Mm-hmm. So I began sitting by myself. That's a sacrifice that I had to give up. Yeah. Um, even before, I guess, um, I was saved, but that was a a conviction that was placed into my life was about um, was about how homosexuality is a sin and yep. how it's detest- detestable and it's it's not a right thing it's not natural I guess you can say mm-hmm. and um, in class I remember my teacher came up to me and we we had to make these little pins mm-hmm. that we put on our shirts that would tell people that would tell um, essentially gay people or lesbians that they can come and talk to us about their feelings or what they're going through. Mm-hmm. Um, or really we can like support them or something like that. And I was the only person in my class that didn't make that pin. 
Mm-hmm. And my teacher blatantly set out that it's your own choice. And she came up to me afterwards or during it when I said I didn't want to make one. And she said, like, oh, wow, I'm, like, really disappointed. Mm-hmm. And it's something that – it's, like, some things that you, you really have to step out and – um and you have to be different in those areas. There was a time in my, believe it or not, I took an AP class in, in my senior year, mm-hmm. uh, AP US Gov, and they had a um, they had a survey, and it talked about do women have, I guess, the choice over their body. I forgot how. Yeah, do women get to choose, like basically, whatever. Yeah. yeah, and it was implying that that about abortions. Yeah, and I was the only one in the class. It was a packed class, completely full, and I was the only one in that whole class that, that voted against abortions. Yeah. I think when they made the question more specific, I think there were maybe two people, mm-hmm. including me, that voted against abortion, but it's something that, that yeah, that uh, times where you have to really stand out against culture, and you can't let that affect um, God's moral compass that he's put inside of you. Yeah. Definitely, like, when we were going to school, you're, you're, you're a year ahead of me. But when we were going to schools around the same time, and this is when they started to really start pushing um, a lot of these different agendas. And, <clears throat> you know, you know, one thing was like sexuality was being normalized, too. And I remember like even there's an instance myself um, where they were asking, like, is, is pornography OK? Is masturbation OK? And like almost the whole class said it was normal. And I'm like, What? And then I was, like, one of the few people who said it wasn't normal. And it's, like, it's crazy to me to see how, like, different, like, the culture is and how it's so much different it is from the Bible. And, like, growing up, like, I, I can only imagine what people, like, that are going to high school in the future oh, have to future, go through. Like, our kids. and Yeah. They're going to have, they're going to probably go through it way worse than us. So, yeah, the, it's definitely interesting. So, um, kind of to wrap all this up, because we're running out of time, unfortunately. Um, are there any last thoughts that you want to leave off uh, with this topic in particular? Um, I guess you can say in conclusion is that, yes, in general, Christians, they don't necessarily fit into the culture completely. Mm-hmm. If you look at any time in history, or even in American history, there was always something wrong where Christians had to stand out against. Yep. And it just, it just, it's, I feel like it's always going to happen because we're always going to have, there's always going to be some kind of root of evil um, in, in politics and anything like that. So I guess in general rule is that there's going to be something out there that we can't accept and we have to be ready to deny it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, honestly, I, I think it's important that when you trust in God's word, that when you stay grounded and that you, you, you say, Lord, like I surrender everything to you, you know, I surrender my views, my moral compass, because honestly, without, without God, like we don't really have a standard, uh, for a moral compass. So I think that when we're battling this, this issue of culture and Christianity and them conflicting, it's important that we understand that God is in control and that amen. we have to trust in him. Amen, amen. All right, Tim, thank you so much for this, uh, coming amen. on and for everyone watching, thank you so much. Please like, and subscribe. If there's any topic that you want us to to talk about in our youth, please leave it down in the the comment section. Yes, thank you. All right, peace out.